So lead or follow. I think the critic's role in all of this, whatever all of this really is, uh, is in spirit a lot like what um, the typical artistic director or artist of any type who wants to make a living uh, pursuing their craft and their art. Uh, the, these are all issues we're, we're dealing with, and uh, I, I'm, I'm conflicted about some aspects of it, but I'm, I'm clear on others. The ones I'm conflicted on, I think, are, you know, are, are, are the, the, quote, voices of the people replacing the professional critical response. Well, yeah, it's, I don't think it's replacing, ideally. I think it's just finally being heard um, in and among the gatekeepers. And look, plenty of professional critics are damn well worth replacing and really <laughs> and really are sitting on their laurels and maybe never had the real intellectual authority or just the, the kind of provocation in their arguments that readers get something out of maybe maybe they, maybe they never had it. Um, it's very hard to find these full-time Perches in any medium now for anybody writing about the arts to say what they feel they need to say And those of us who have these jobs are very fortunate now. I'm a film critic now I'm thinking and speaking mostly vis-a-vis uh, -vis this argument that's going on in arts journal um, From my years as a theater critic uh, working in various regional um, markets all kinds LA San Diego the Twin Cities Chicago and the lead follow thing in that regard becomes very clear to me. I, I, I think you follow your audience in terms of every way they want to communicate with you and interact with you. And you lead in every other sense. Now, what do I mean by that? I, I always go back to this example for it's it's ancient in terms of the, in terms of the timeline. But in the '90s, when I was working in San Diego, the Old Globe Theater, which is a long time you know venerable not for not for profit regional theater, started in the '30s, I believe, and um, in the '90s they staged the first major regional theater production of Forever Plaid, uh, which was a huge success, and they made they put a lot of money in the bank uh, off off the revenue from that show uh, and brought it back more than once a couple seasons later i might be a little off on the time but but i believe this is how it played out a couple seasons later uh, jack o'brien the artistic director and tom hall then the managing director had a um, institute a, a board or a staff retreat that was largely um, hinged on one question: What have we done? We have made a deal with the devil, and we have we have made all this money on Forever Platt, and now we can't get our subscribers to come back the same season and sit through an evening of Shakespeare. Now, the Old Globe was founded on Shakespeare, and we're not even talking about radical, cutting edge, leave you chule at the Guthrie in the '80s Shakespeare. This is this is more mainline, well appointed. Uh, often very entertaining Shakespeare, but if an audience, if, I think the lesson is this, if the audience and their stated tastes in terms of surveys and inserts into the program, what do you want to see next season? If you, if you start listening to that as a primary way to program a season, I think you're dead. And um, and that's not to say the audience is stupid because they're audience and hopefully you are making them smart, but you have to really encourage their best and bravest, uh, most adventuresome tastes. And that doesn't happen uh, when you're filling out uh, a one sheet insert in a program.